Okay, it should be on the air. Let me just double check real quick. Refresh uh, YouTube because it's always a few seconds behind. I'm just going to go on the assumption that we're that we're live, that it's doing it. Uh, well, welcome everybody to uh, uh, what I'm I'm hoping is a new series of streams um, based on what happened with um, the Thunderfoot and Just a Car stream with Atheism Plus. Uh, this time we're going to try it with. That's what I get for not turning my audio off. This time we're going to try it with uh, a couple of people who wanted to talk about, uh, I, I guess you could call it the trans community. Uh, I've got a couple of guests, uh, Liz and Sophia. Hey. Uh, so I'm going to give you guys a chance to hi. just kind of say hi and uh, introduce yourselves to everybody, and we'll get it going and uh, go from there. Uh, Liz, if you want to start. Uh, sure. Um, hey, I'm Iron Liz. Um, most people know me from uh, being a Z-list uh, internet celebrity who dated Liz. His own stuff going on, but um, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm a big fan of the Internet Aristocrat. Um, I am post-op myself. I had my surgery, my bottom surgery, in uh, 2013. So I don't even really consider myself trans necessarily at this point. I consider myself 100% female. So um, uh, apart from that, I can go more into the specific details, but that's kind of where I'm at. So. Okay, all right. Uh, Sophia, if you want to go. Uh, yeah, um, most of you know me as Hidden Tara. That's uh, probably you saw in the tweets. Um, I have actually been dealing with uh, body dysmorphia since I was a child. Um, I didn't actually know what transgenderism was until I was 21, and here I am 29 now. Uh, I've been on hormone therapy for four years, and I've uh, a month ago I had my breast augmentation. I'm in the process of uh, preparing for bottom surgery. So um, I am one of those people who uh, I get called Triscum all the time because I am a uh, heavy advocate for you know the medical uh, rights and access for transgender people. And as far as um, what Iron Liz just said, uh, yeah, I don't identify as trans. It's a medical diagnosis, and that's all it really is. It's like I'm I'm a woman. Like there was a time in my life, um, you know, when I was in this. Uh, We'll just call it limbo, uh, where you know it's like, oh, clothes were girls' clothes, clothes were boys' clothes, whatever. And then it's like, the longer into transition you realize that no, just clothes are clothes. It's just like who you are is who you are, um, and it's all about dealing with the actual body dysmorphia, which I'm sure we'll get into more detail later. Okay. Well, you know, uh, we yeah, I'm I'm trying to think of kind of where we want to start here. Um, now that we've done the kind of the introductions, uh, well. You know, since you brought up the dysmorphia, let's let's start with that, if that's uh, cool with uh, both of you. Um, All right. Now, I, I looked into this a little bit, and um, you know, I, I'm probably going to get half the terms wrong, but you know, it, it is what it is. I know that the DSM-5 changed uh, their diagnosis. It used to be gender identity disorder, and they changed it to gender dysphoria, mm -hmm. uh, and they classify that as not necessarily being a, a mental illness. It's more of a um, anxiety and depression brought on by what they can consider a, a condition going on in the person which, you know, is remedied a few different ways that they talk about. Um, when I was looking into this, you know, I, find, I found striking parallels to body dysmorphic disorder. Now, the difference between the two is in DSM-5, it does diagnose or it does state that body dysmorphic disorder is a mental illness. But the, the classifications and the criteria seem to be very similar. It's distress and anxiety brought on by the condition, you know, surrounded yeah. by depression. Um, with body dysmorphic disorder, you have people who see their body as being one way that is different than it physically appears. Um, no, they classify it as a form of OCD. A lot of people, when they have this kind of condition, will act out in physical ways to alter their body. Um, you know, you hear horror stories about it. You know, somebody thinks that their their nose is a different shape and they try to fix it with a hammer, that kind of thing. You know, that's uh -huh. a really uh, severe form of it. Um, you know, what would your take on this be? Why would gender dysphoria be considered not to be a mental illness? and body dysmorphic disorder be a mental illness. Uh, where do you see, I guess, that dividing line since it seems that the criteria is so similar between the two? Um, well, I actually have the DSM-5 in front of me and I know a lot about the history of this particular argument. Um, what happened was, in the D uh, until the DSM-5, originally transgenderism or gender identity disorder was listed under sexual dysfunctions. Okay. Um, and that's where a lot of the blowback came from. Like erectile dysfunction and transgenderism 
has absolutely nothing to do with each other. Like, so it's like to call it a sexual dysfunction is kind of a misnomer. And essentially, uh, there was this wave in the community that wanted it removed completely. And then you had the rest of us, which are rational, reasonable adults, that said, if you remove it from the DMS or DM, DSM-5, sorry, tongue tied um, then it's no longer a medical diagnosis, therefore you cannot get medical treatment. Um, which creates a serious problem <laughs> because you need the medical treatment in order to alleviate the body dysmorphia. And uh, as far as like, you know, your question about gender dysmorphia versus body dysmorphia, honestly, I think they're all bullshit weasel words. Okay. Um, in order to um, pander to people that have been pestering them nonstop to say it's not a mental illness, but it's still in the book of mental illnesses. Because it is one. <laughs> well, I, I did notice that in the in the DSM five. I, I know that um, when they were talking about the transition from the fourth volume to the fifth volume, they had dropped um, disorder because they, they they had said that they don't view it as a disorder anymore. They wanted to get rid of the negative connotations associated with uh, gender dysphoria. That's what, at least that's what the the excerpt that I read it said. And by you know just I'm throwing this out there. I am no psychologist, and reading through the DSM is a fucking task in itself. Um, you know, Liz, I, I guess we've heard from Sophia. Mm -hmm. What what's your opinion on this? Do you do you view these as being different? Do you view uh, transgenderism? Do you view gender dysphoria as a mental illness? Do you think it's a physical thing? Do you think it's neither? How, what's your take on it? Uh, well, I guess for me, the first thing is I'm not a doctor or a psychologist, so you know, I'm just a person. But I think there's kind of a difference between, you know, hey, I'm screwed up because my dad touched me and I have body image issues versus I think I have a like a birth defect. Um, I guess really for me, as long as it is you're properly treated the way you need to be, go, you need to go for it. That's all that really matters. Um, the important thing too, I guess, to realize is that there's actually a standardized mode of care for for transgenderism. That's a worldwide standard. It's not you know some some SJW's you know master's thesis program or anything like that. It's Absolutely. there's a you know there's a there's a, a standard of practice throughout it. So it's called the WPATH standards of care if anyone Okay, you you interested. got more info on this than I do. Yeah. Um, WPATH is what is considered the basically the medical bible in which all doctors are supposed to follow. Uh, and just like a quick highlight would be like you don't prescribe medications to anybody who hasn't had real life experience, i.e. living in the gender in which they identify as for over a year, in some cases two years, and so on and so forth. Like there are very uh, strict rules that doctors are supposed to follow uh, when actually dealing with the diagnosis of transgenderism. Okay, okay. Right. Um, let's move into uh, something a little bit differently uh, from the DSM. Uh, just and again, these are based on things that people have brought up and certain things that I had looked into myself. Um, what are your feelings? Uh, and either of you can answer this in any order you want. Uh, and I, I guess on the age of which you think somebody sh could undertake this sort of thing, uh, what what would be the cutoff age? Do you believe that anybody can say that uh, I'm transgendered? I'm really stuck in a different body. Do you think that somebody should wait until a certain age to do that? Um, what are your views on that? Oh, geez. Um, I guess I'm kind of in the middle when it comes to this, where I you got to be careful, especially with kids, because this is a one-way trip. Um, and in that respect, if you get it wrong, abuse, I would think, on some respect. On the other hand, really, it's like asking somebody how they can identify themselves as being a Christian. It's you. You just are. Um, I knew when I was five, but I didn't really understand what differences in gender really were at that age. So, I don't know. I guess I'm, I'm not, I don't really have an answer. I'm not a doctor or a psychologist. That's a question for them. Okay, uh, Sophia? Uh, for me, if I had a time machine and could say, all right, you can go back in time and get younger you to start on uh, testosterone blockers as I entered puberty, I wouldn't take that trip. I think it's irresponsible. Uh, I wouldn't be the person I am today if I didn't actually experience life. And the reality is, um, despite you know documentaries about I Am Jazz, which is a really great one about a young trans girl, um, 
you know, she was in an environment with a mother who actually was a mental health professional, um, and you know, they were able to take care of the symptoms at a younger age. Um, for me, unless the child's actually literally trying to cut their body parts off, which genital mutilation is a very common theme amongst the actual transgender, transsexual community, um, then it's not bad enough to make it to adulthood. Because a child is not thinking about, you know, um, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? Do I want to get married? Um, you know, am I going to have children? And having children is obviously the biggest question. Uh, you know, it's like, uh, do you have the income to uh, save sperm? And if, if you're an M to F, it's like in case you do want to have children. Questions like these cannot be answered by a child. They shouldn't be answered by a child by a doctor, and they shouldn't be answered by for the child by a parent. Mm -hmm. um, it's just completely irresponsible. So I think um, a as much as it sucks until the science is really caught up with, um, you know, society, I guess, uh, we don't know what causes this and we don't know the best methodology in treating it. We know what works in some people and it doesn't work in others. So until we have a more firm grasp, I, I'm completely against basically using children as guinea pigs. Um, as you very uh, correctly described in your uh, Tumblrisms video where you talked about the pedophilic doctor who was the one responsible for what we know as gender in today's society. Oh, mm -hmm. John Money. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's like if you look at that case, it's actually – he inadvertently proved that transgenderism is real. Um, and um, I'm going to explain that because I know that's going to seem crazy. Okay. For those of you who don't know, what this doctor did was his child had some sort of, you know, like something went wrong when he was born. So they cut his penis off, sewed it up, made him look like a girl, put him on female hormones, uh, and socially acclimated him as a girl. And when he got older, he found out, uh, absolutely furious, went back to living as a male, and ended up killing himself. Uh, so that right there the way I read that is the mind knows what it's doing when it comes to the body and the older you get the more the mind understands it's like even though he was told his entire life that he was a girl even though he was made to look like a girl he knew he was actually a man so and it led to his suicide so right. gender is hardwired into you it, yeah it's just it's just there um, I there are several theories behind that which I could get into but um, just to stay you know pretty basic, it's like, it, it's that suicide that's a perfect example of transgenderism only from the other, the other side of the coin. Somebody who was forced to live as a gender that they weren't from the time they were born uh, and raised in that environment. So... Okay. Um, you know, kind of touching on a few things there. Um, with John Money, I, I believe it was his circumcision. There was some kind of uh, accident when the boy was circumcised. Um, I, I, I do know that he had a twin brother. Um, and there were allegations too with money, you know, kind of going back to his suicide and parts of the cause for that. Um, they were made to do some really awkward uh, out there. Oh, yeah, he was a pedophile and molested those children, and right. I, he should have been shot in the head. And, and, and I think that, that might have been a contributing factor. But of course. It, you know, kind of going on this tangent, though, about, um, you know, children of what age? I mean, you brought up Jazz, who's 11. Uh, there's also the case of Tammy LaBelle, who used to be Thomas LaBelle, who's a 10-year-old. Um, I believe he's from California. Um, that was the the guy. Uh, that was the kid that had the two lesbian parents that put him on the hormone blockers at ten. Yeah. Um, you know, it, this kind of touches on. I, I guess I'd be interested in knowing your opinion on this. So you've got people like uh, Vygotsky who talk about zone of proximal uh, development. You know, hands-on learning, scaffolding. That if you teach a child to do something, that child will then do it and learn it and absorb it. You know, it's kind of a mentoring or a modeling of behavior. So when you have a situation where a kid grows up in a house like uh, taking uh, Tommy slash Tammy LaBelle, whose parents said, oh, we knew from a very young age that uh, Tommy was really a girl, you know, that wanted to be a, a girl, so we bought him female clothing. Uh, we, you know, dressed him up. We allowed him to do these things. He, you know, going on Vygotsky, he would say, or it would seem to be, that the child learned the behavior. So when you when you have a kid that's kind of going through that, um, that's being reinforced through their their parents, you've got this I guess scaffolding, you've got this modeling going on, where they're they're being taught that yes, you really are a girl. You like to play with a Barbie, so here's a dress. Put the dress on. Don't you feel more like you should feel? Um, 
that I think is at least personally where the risk comes in because now you have a preteen who isn't you know developed uh, mentally, uh, emotionally, physically uh, put into a situation where they might make a decision that later on is going to affect them for the rest of their life. You know, Tommy may feel like a girl now because of the situation and the environment and the modeling, but what would Tommy feel like after puberty at 13 or 14? I and mean, they're never going to know now because of the hormone blocking treatments that they're going on. Um, what What is your take on that? Do you think Vygotsky had anything to that? Do you think that, you know, the influence of parents could be swaying this kind of influx that we're seeing a lot of now? Um, I, I know you brought up jazz. I think jazz is a bit of a different situation, but like with the Tommies and the Tammies out there, do you think parents maybe are pushing their kids into this because they think it's more accepted and they maybe maybe almost designer children? What, what do either of you feel on that? I, I'm inclined to agree with you, actually, um, and I think that's where you run the danger of it. For me, I didn't actually know what transgenderism was until I was about 13, 14, um, and certainly as a young kid, you, you values given to you, so in that respect, yeah, I do think that's that's a, a big potential for problems. Uh, it's interesting that you uh, worded it this way because um, your chat's favorite person, Mundane Matt, uh, tweeted a photo of this uh, kid who was wearing basically like a Jesus Armageddon type shirt and his dad <laughs> was at some kind of, S, you know, like, you know, crazy, you know, white supremacist almost like kind of movement and... Uh, Matt made the comment about, like, it's a shame that, you know, children force this kind of shit onto their kids. And my response was that I had to go to Jesus camp all the way up until I was 11 years old, and when I was 12, I bought Kid Rock's Devil Without a Cause. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it's like you have, and, and the interesting thing is I bought that CD while on a church trip. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, needless to say, my youth minister wasn't too thrilled with me when he opened the CD and you've got Kid Rock giving the middle finger to you. Um, so it's like there is an indoctrination that is going on in some people, and that's why I think it's sick. Um, I think it's it's just, sick is the is the best word I can use to describe it. Um, psychopath, the sociopathic would probably be a level up from there. It just it really is um, uh, completely irresponsible. I mean, it's like you know forcing, you know. It, it, it's like liberalism has become a type of religion. Progressivism has become this type of cultish religion. It's like you hear Sargon always talking about feminism becoming like this cultish religion. And it's like the same thing is happening with some of these people that are, you know, these gender ideologues. And they're having kids. And they should not be allowed to get that, like, medical, like, that's dangerous. That's why the W Pass standards of care exist. And anybody who tries to fuck with the W Pass standards of care, I'm coming for you. Because that's just it, that's that's it, just it's wrong. It's fucked up. That's all. It, it just it pisses me off when you, when you bring kids into the mix. I just I lose my cool because it's just not right what they're doing. It, it seems like both of you take kind of an individualistic um, approach to this. You think it's more of a it, it should be left up to the individual, I, I suppose, rather than uh, the group around them. Would you say that, that that that's accurate? That if you're going to do something like this, that it should be something you yourself are sure of, rather Absolutely. than something uh, parents or friends or somebody else says, hey, you should do this, or hey, this is what you really are? Absolutely. I mean, it's your body, it's your life, and there's no going back. It's, it's really that simple. No, I, I saw somebody in chat bring this up, and I, I guess I'll throw this out there because I thought it was interesting. Um, well, now I've got to scroll up because it was actually like a paragraph long. And I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it here. Um, sorry, it kind of goes by quickly, so sometimes I I lose it. Um, the, the gist of it was I'll, I'll paraphrase. I'll probably get some of it wrong. But uh, what is your take on the argument that you know uh, somebody who's transgender said I, I'm born in the wrong body, or or the arguments I've seen kind of put forward more recently of my brain is wired this way and and this is how I really feel. Uh, what's your take on that when you compare it to feminists who say that gender um, and sexual identity is nothing more than a social construct? Well, ask the uh, the kid that uh, or the the kid that Dr. Money did that thing to. You think that was a social construct? Hmm. Fair point. <laughs> uh, there you go, chat. 
<laughs> yeah, um, I I would say building on that. Uh, wow, that was just you've totally nailed the money. No pun intended. <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah. <coughs> Damn. <laughs> Sorry, they have laugh tracks in this thing. Anyway, go ahead. Um, the notion. Okay, the, actually, I knew this question was going to come up, and I actually do have an answer for it. And I will say that before hormone therapy. I actually used to say that, that I felt like I was born in the wrong body. And this is where a lot of the body dysmorphia comes in, where it's like when I would look in the mirror naked, what I see isn't, you know, what what's there shouldn't be there. And I was almost at the point of general mutilation uh, when I was a child, but I didn't because I grew up, like I said, I grew up in a Christian household and, you know, you're supposed to protect the temple of God, so it's like the notion of suicide will send you to hell and, you know, all those brainwashed things that were put into me actually did inadvertently help save my life. Um, so it's like I never mutilated myself, but God, did I ever want to. Um, when I started hormone therapy, that went away. It alleviated the dysmorphia. It's like the chemical imbalance that was going on in my brain resolved itself very quickly. And mm -hmm. the longer I've been transitioning, the more and more the dysphoria has subsided. And it's subsided to the point where the only time I experience any body dysmorphia is actual, um, well, I'll put it bluntly, when I'm having sex. Like, that's the only time I experience any kind of uh, body dysmorphia at all these days. Um, because I've gone through the WPATH standards of care, I got the treatment I needed, and it essentially, you know, al it alleviated all the symptoms. Um, now, people argue over if that's the right way to go. For me, it was. It, it solved the problem. I don't want to kill myself anymore. It's like I wake up happy with who I am and my body, and, you know, I don't go, oh, I was born in the wrong body. I go, no, I was born me. I just happen to have, uh, in what I view as a genetic defect. Okay. Um, you know, it, it's interesting you bring up the uh, the genetic component of it, I, I guess. I, I know that there have been recent studies that have been put forward uh, dealing, at least in the case of homosexuality, saying that it could have an epigenetic cause, yes. that it, it could have something to do with development in the womb, and then that's what is the root cause of homosexuality. Um, if they found out that there's something similar going on with transsexuality, um, and they found out that, uh, you know, when we talk about mental illnesses, there's this idea that it's this magical thing, right? that a mental illness is something that is somehow different than a physical illness. But I mean a mental illness in essence is a physical illness in some capacity, whether it's a chemical imbalance or something else. Right. The so, brain's a muscle, so... Yeah, exactly. If, mm. if a component of that brain isn't working, if the chemicals are off balance, like in depression or something like that, and you write it, you fix it. Uh, so let's say that it, you know uh, transsexuality turns out to be similar to homosexuality. Let's say the epigenetic cause is, is true, that there's evidence for it and there's something similar going on with transsexuality. And they say that we can develop a cure, essentially, to alleviate the symptoms without having to take hormones, without having to have sexual reassignment surgery, that we can make you feel normal in your own body without having to transition. Would that be a good thing? Would that be better for people that are dealing with this? Would you see that as a, a, a bad thing? What would your take on that be? I'll let you feel this one for first. I got. I got to think about that. Um, I would say for anybody uh, listening to that, um, I would say go watch X Men. Uh, look at the Mutant Registration Act. Uh, we got Captain America: Civil War coming up. Uh, I would look at the Superhuman Registration Act and uh, see if if you really think it's a good idea. Um, you know, I I think that. You know what makes us different in life um, is is can be a good thing. I mean, ultimately, I agree that we're not all special snowflakes and we're all the same bags of meat, uh, and we could quote Fight Club, you know, all night and day if we wanted to. But uh, no, I, I think that it's it's born in nature. It's like there are homosexual animals, uh, and a lot of scientists actually say that homosexuality is a way of nature fighting back against overpopulation. Um, so uh, it's it could just be Darwinism for all we know. Uh, I, I, that's really how I look at it. It's like it's like it would be like saying, uh, all right, we now have this pill that you know uh, we can make everybody the same race. Do we do it just to end all racial tensions and racial problems, or do we just go okay, let's just all be the races we were born? 
I think at least, you know, in relation to this particular argument or this discussion, um, when you're bringing up, and again, this is something that social justice warriors would say is race is a social construct as well, but putting that, you know, aside and, and just talking about this. Fuck social uh, justice warriors. <laughs> if, if medical science came out and said, listen, uh, this is, uh, it, because what we're looking at here is this is a situation you have, or at least this is how I see it. You, you've got uh, different groups. You've got, uh, you know, transsexuals, you've got homosexuals, and they get a lot of shit for all sorts of different reasons. But if science came out, if medical science came out and said, this is a physical condition, it's an ailment, it's, uh, it's epigenetic, it's no different than something like sickle cell anemia or angel syndrome, and we can fix it, wouldn't that take care of uh, all the shit that people get? I mean, you can't really begrudge a cancer patient for having a tumor if it's a physical manifestation of an illness, if it's an actual physical illness. Uh, this isn't really genetically designing a baby to be white. This is saying that there's an imbalance, that there is a developmental problem that happened in the womb, and that we're correcting it. Um, rather than trying to make you straight because we think straight is superior, but we found out that there's something going on, and it's it's similar to these other sort of uh, conditions, and we can fix it. I, I, you know, talking about kind of I know what you mean with the Mutant Registration Act. I'm a kind of a comic geek myself, so I get what you're saying. Um, if I sorry, I, I some of the people in the chat are saying that I keep breaking out, so sorry about that. I'll try to talk a little bit louder, but um, I guess for me. Uh, as soon as eugenics gets on the table, I think you're opening up a different can of bees, and I say bees and not worms for a reason. Um, it, you, can, you can go that route to be sure, but I will say that while it did suck for a lot of the shit that I've gone through, it did make me a stronger human being. Um, there is something through strength through adversity, and yeah, I've, I've been the victim of, uh, of a hate crime. I've, I have been told in a job interview there's no way in hell that I'll hire a, a tranny faggot at this job and you you have to dig in yourself to overcome that so while I wouldn't wish that on anybody um, I don't know it, it's given me the drive and it's it's given me the inner strength that I've needed to overcome difficulty in my own life okay uh, Sophia um, I think uh, to quote Malcolm nature always finds a way uh, and as we'll see in the new Jurassic World, uh, uh, when you start nature fucking problem. with nature, it's not a good thing. Um, I understand, like, again, it's kind of like, you know, the whole, do you let trans children transition? And I say no. I say you need to let the brain develop to the point where it can comprehend what's happening to it. Um, so it's like, if I wouldn't do it to a child, I certainly wouldn't do it to an infant, and I wouldn't do it to an embryo. Um, I just... I don't think I don't think nature is a force to be fucked with. It's just something that we have to deal with, uh, and it it's like it's something that I wouldn't even wish upon my worst enemy. But I agree with Iron Liz that it has made me a much stronger person. I don't take anybody's shit. Okay, uh, it, the only reason the reason I bring it up is this. Um, you know, if we say that this is a a condition, right? A physical condition, a mental condition, however you want to define it. Um, I mean, I, I think what's getting lost in translation is the idea that, you know, eugenics is going to fix it. But, you know, if a child was born with something like um, a spina bifida, right? If you could go in and the child had that condition, wouldn't you want to fix that before they're born? If they classify this as an epigenetic disorder like Angel Wilhelm's or any of those others, wouldn't you think you would want to fix that? I mean, if it were classified, if it was found to be a deviation from the norm. That's the ultimate question. I, I it It's very difficult to answer because I think that in reality, most people would do it. I think at the end of the day, when you're faced with that decision, people, if they had the option to do it, they would do it. Okay. So, if it existed, I mean, it, it's the same thing, like uh, um, autism or uh, being uh, uh, blind or deaf or whatever. I mean, this, the reality is, in the future, designer babies will be a thing. And the question is, where will we draw the line? And mm -hmm. society will have to answer that question one day. I mean, uh, if you look at the research of the Nobel Prize winner who developed and pushed eugenics in the United States anyways, it's like he wanted to do it based on IQ and offer a government incentive program to people of a lower IQ for um, voluntary sterilization. 
Now, who's to say that's a bad idea? It's like, let the smart people breed and let the dumb people live out the rest of their lives. It's like, but it, it's just, it, it, everyone's... It is that will show you the pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, where do you draw the line? Is That's really what it boils down to. And I guess, you know, we'll, we'll, we're all faced with it, you know, when, when that opportunity comes. I don't think that's going to happen in our lifetimes. So it's certainly something that I won't have to worry about. Um, but, you know, maybe two generations from now they'll be going, well, shit, do I want a 6'2", blonde hair, blue-eyed, perfect individual that can run a mile in under a minute or whatever? It's like, do I want a superhuman baby uh, with an IQ of 150? Or, you know, what, what are we going to do? Right, but I mean, I, I would suppose there is a middle ground between what we have today, um, where it's kind of... You know, your your kid could be born any sort of way with any kind of condition. You know what I mean? Um, and Gattaca, which is kind of what you're talking about, where great you know, movie. Yeah, where where you have to be a certain way. If you you know, if you want to be that NASA astronaut, you'd better be perfect, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So I personally, I feel there there there'd be a middle ground. I, I think this is interesting just because I've I've been kind of looking into it. Um, again, it's way beyond anything I know, but. I guess another component of this would be when you talk about people that go through transitioning, as you call it, you know, they, they go on the hormone blockers or they have sexual reassignment surgery and they go through this, you still have a significantly high suicide rate. Um, I've seen that there was a 2014 study that was talking about nine times uh, higher than, you know, uh, sample groups. 50-50, 50% uh, 50, 50%, 5 zero die before the age 25, usually through suicide. So what what is your feeling on that? What is your take on that? Why is that happening? Uh, you know, if you feel that you're uh, born a certain way and you change yourself physically, whether it's through hormones or surgery, to get to be that certain way and then end up killing yourself, what what's going on? Does that mean that it really wasn't what you thought it was? Could it be that, you know, that there, there that this isn't something that can be fixed with simple surgery and hormone treatments? The best way I can describe this one is um, lottery loser syndrome. Um, just because you win the lottery doesn't mean that your life's problems are gone. Uh, transitional surgery might take care of your gender dysmorphia, but it or body dysmorphia, whatever you want to call it, but it doesn't take care of everything else that's wrong in your life. Uh, and it, it, you know, it just so happens that a lot of times, because someone's transgender, you run into situations like uh, with Iron Liz, where I'm not going to hire this tranny faggot for a job. You run into a situation like mine, where uh, I've been assaulted, I'm in the middle of suing a hospital, it's like, uh, it, you run into these roadblocks in life that you wouldn't normally face if you weren't trans that uh, can essentially backstop you and prevent you from living a normal healthy life. So just because, you know, you solve your physical ailment or mental ailment, however you want to approach it, it doesn't mean you haven't left a, you know, there's this just, you know, um, trailblaze of problems that are in your life that have arisen because of it. Yeah, I think for me, um, my surgery was probably the best thing I've ever done in my life, but it did come with some significant costs. I, um, I had three torn sutures and an infection, which is, is exactly as painful as you might think it is. Um, and part of the aftercare that you're going to have to do for the rest of your life is to basically put a, a hard plastic phallus up your snatch and stretch it out. So you got to do that after surgery, otherwise it'll seal up, it'll close up. So, you know, how, how, how long is that process? Again, I don't know much about this, so it, it sounds like an unpleasant process. How long did it take, I guess, fully to go through that? Uh, to heal up? Yeah. Uh, six to eight months to get back to 100%. Jesus, uh, really? Yeah, like, no, I, I, I had some complications with the surgery, and so it was rough, but it was probably the best des decision I've ever made. Part of it's uh, hormonal, part of it is psychological, but I feel more um, put together in, the, in a place that I need to be. So I guess I can't really speak for other people, but for me it was the, it was the right decision even if it was a difficult path. Now with the cost of that is, that, is that covered by medical insurance or is this something you have to go outside of medical insurance to do? Uh, some are. Uh, some medical insurance insurances will cover it, but... Um, yeah, either way, the American medical system is messed up for different reasons, but mine was covered by the uh, student insurance from my uh, university. So I went back to school, and instead of pay the full amount, I had 90% of the surgery covered just by being a student. 
Okay. All right. Well, and see, I wanted to touch on these issues before we kind of get into the bulk of what we're here to talk about, because I wanted to give, I guess, people that are watching the stream right now an idea of where you stand on certain issues. You know what I mean? Um, these are some of the questions that people wanted answered, and it kind of gives, a, I guess, a background to what each of you think. Um, because the bulk of the stream, or what we're focusing on, is uh, social justice and its influence on different communities. Now, um, obviously, you know, an individual is an individual. You're not here as ambassadors of every transsexual person or trans person that exists. But um, I, I guess we can start it off with what would you define as a social justice warrior and what have you seen uh, in relation to uh, the trans community, the kind of, I guess, interactions they've had with it? Has it been good? Has it been bad? How would you classify it? Oh, geez, can I take this one? <laughs> no, no problem. Um, okay, so... Um, I actually volunteered at a sexual assault helpline, um, and this is for people of all genders, races, creeds, whatever, who've been sexually assaulted and whatever. And I did that kind of as an out of an altruism. Um, I just wanted to help other people of who who've been raped, who've been sex training for it. It got kind of bonkers. I mean, I could I could. Uh, there was a lot of bullshit that was involved with it. So, like, one of the first activities we had to do was, um, uh, okay, well, we're going to help out people, but first we need to understand what kind of privileges that we have. And so the, the activity was we have to stand on a chair, or one person stands on a chair, another person lays on their stomach underneath the chair, and, oh, what's the defining difference for your privilege? And, you know, oh, if you're at the top of the social ladder, you can see more than the person below you. And I'm like, what does this have to do with... with uh, assisting a person who's been raped. I, and, and another thing that came up too was um, we would have these, uh, like what do you do if somebody says a rape joke or something that you find distasteful or whatever. So the scenario was um, you overhear at a party, somebody says, oh that's so crazy. And the, the proper solution through the training apparently was that, oh you should did say that because it victimizes people who have, you know, mental health problems. And I was like, are you, are you kidding me? You know, they got a lot of uh, pushback on that because it has nothing to do with, okay, somebody got raped, they need the, you know, they want to have somebody that, to accompany them to the hospital. It has nothing to do with that. And it really got to me. It's like, this, put your politics at home. You should be able to support somebody, whether they're, you know, Campus Crusade for Christ or whether they're at the GLBTQ uh, cultural center, I don't know. The point being is that it, it, it infiltrated things and I just, I got so disgusted with it that I ended up leaving with it. Like, come on guys, you can do better than this. And was that kind of your first, I guess, introduction to social justice in a, a personal capacity, in real life? Well, it was more the, uh, it was in my face. You know, I was there to help out people. I wasn't there to spread, to, to propagate a political message. And I think it bastardized a legitimate organization to the point where, you know what, screw it. I, I, I can use my talents elsewhere if that's what how it's going to go. But uh, it certainly opened my eyes to it. And I realize again after watching your, your stuff that I really do have to speak up because I'm in a uh, unique situation where I can prove to people that, no, the vast majority of, of trans people, I would say, are not this psycho crazy, but maybe it's a generational thing, maybe it's this, the SJW co-op stuff, but I am not this way. i got to speak up. Okay. Uh, Sophia? Um, I would say we, we need to do a little bit of background uh, research slash information before we really dive into that, if that's okay with you. So that way people really understand uh, how the SJW virus as I like to call it, uh, began infesting the the entire LGBT community. Um, is it okay yeah. if I kind of give a little spiel? All right. Um, first, we need to start with Google Trends. Google Trends started in 2006, and that's when they started, um, you know, basically tracking data of searches and everything that we type into Google. So you can use Google Trends to basically study the social justice warrior, and I call them warriors with an O, not an A, um, their language. Um, and we noticed that, you know, Tumblr, as we all know, started in 2007. Um, now, this was a, a site that essentially, in my opinion now, I know people are going to hate me for saying this, 
was a great site up until it was ruined. Um, it was a new shiny version of what MySpace was in its uh, creation, where you could blog and share photos and video, um, HTML files and photos and things like that. It was a great service uh, that you could do on a public forum because what happened was my generation, I'm, I'm almost 30 years old, it's like we started off uh, with our social, well I, my first social website was redversusblue.com so fuck all y'all, uh, but then uh, MySpace and then Facebook and what happened was with Facebook it became a very personal experience with your friends or maybe people you would network with outside of your friends. Uh, MySpace was a much more public forum. Uh, it was a chance to share stuff kind of with the world. And with Facebook, we kind of went back inside. Uh, with Tumblr, it again opened us back up to an open forum of sharing blogs and poetry and photos and videos or whatever. Um, so I thought it was great. But then it got taken over. And that was with the rise of Atheism Plus. And if we look at the Google Trends, you can enter in all of their terminology, uh, agender, non-gender, genderqueer, uh, pansexual, everything, and you see the emergence of these words, and you just see them skyrocket, especially at 2013. I don't know what happened in 2013. I'm still trying to figure out what event essentially triggered this whole non-gender binary, genderqueer, agender, this fucking nonsense that you hear all over the internet. But something in 2013 happened. Oh, yeah, they announced uh, the Big Bang Theory movie was being made in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hitting the laugh track on that. Uh, bazinga. Um, it's like, so something obviously happened in 2013. Now, the only thing I can see... Uh, that really uh, triggered this. Ah, uh, trigger everyone in the fucking chats. Keeps oh, saying fuck triggered. off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Um, is if you Google search the word blog. Now, vlogging had its peak um, in 2007 and 2006 when high-speed internet uh, got really big, when it started being proliferated throughout the United States. And then it dipped down in 2010. But then, ever since then, it's been on the rise. And uh, being somebody who actually writes for an LGBT YouTube channel, it's like uh, my friend started in 2009, and I've seen our growth. And between our two channels, we have over 600,000 subscribers. Um, it's like, and we usually get over 100,000 views uh, a video. So it's like with the proliferation of vlogging in the gay community, you had this next generation of people that are mentally ill, they now have a platform. They have Tumblr. They have YouTube vlogging. They have easy access to a bunch of other people that think just like them, and you have children educating children instead of children or young adults or adults going to doctors. I went to a doctor. I went to an endocrinologist that worked with Henry Benjamin to write the standards of care. Okay, that's mm -hmm. how good of a doctor I went to. I sought the best medical treatment I could find. These kids are not doing that. They're telling each other that non-gender binary is a thing. Well, I hate to break it to you. We live in a world of ones and zeros. Everything is binary. As Pythagoras said, the world is an equation. Um, so you, we really need to look at the atheism takeover of the internet, atheism plus, the takeover of the internet, and vlogging as the source of where this proliferation of SJWism uh, has come from. Okay, wow. All right. That's a, it's a hell of a background. That's more than a... See, when I looked into it, I kind of <laughs> saw it, it start, I guess, in universities. I mean, I mean, I look at stuff like Sokol. Um, I, I look at, you know, events that transpired in the 90s um, kind of influencing. But I, I do definitely agree that Tumblr uh, and vlogging and blogging have played a hell of a major part in spreading it person to person. It's social networking, essentially, that really is, you know, web 2.0 of where we diagnose each other and where we, you know, create these communities that basically reinforce whatever kind of bullshit we want to throw at each other um, has yeah. allowed has allowed insanity to take place where people want to identify as whatever's going to bring them the most attention. Um, do you think that uh, a majority of what you see on Tumblr, uh, you know, as an example, or any of these other websites where people are identifying as something, do you think that's legitimate, or do you think that this is more of people begging for attention, like uh, Internet uh, by Munchausen, or Munchausen by Internet kind of thing? 
Well, I think everybody wants to feel special in some regard, and if you say you're something that's statistically very, very rare and you have nothing to back it up on, yeah, I it's I agree, it's special snowflake. Um, and for me, you don't want to go through uh, three torn sutures in an infection. It's not fucking fun. Um, you know, for me, like I said, it was a burden that I carried, but it's not something that's cute or fun. I mean, my my uh, my brother more or less disowned me for six years. Um, yeah, there's a ton of shit that goes with it. So, yeah, <laughs> fuck all y'all. <laughs> uh, Sophia? I think if you just uh, Google narcissistic personality disorder... <laughs> Yeah, uh, you'll find the answers because that is what the internet has produced in 2015. Um, people will say anything and everything to get attention, uh, and it's like, what what could possibly get a, especially a child? What could possibly give a child more attention than a boy who shows up to school in a dress? Mm -hmm. So now you have this kind of internet uh, perception, uh, kind of going on this. Of what uh, you know, a transsexual is. Uh, of what a trans person is, a tranny, whatever you want to say. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that it's because they have a platform that it it's kind of skewing it? Like you look at LGBT, you look at all of this stuff. But the examples that pop up in people's heads are people like Lorelai Bailey, or Robert Wayne Stiles, or Cogsdev. You know, these people that basically cause massive shitstorms, and at the center of it, it's their identity uh, that's the main focal point. Uh, do, you, do you think that that's what's fucking things up for people? Uh, you know, you two seem fairly reasonable to me. So, do you think people like that are fucking it up for people like you? And, you know, you add in that SJWism and it really just fucking kicks it up to an 11? I guess for me, my, my sexuality is such a minor part of who I am. I'm not a... I, I'm, I'm more than the sum of my parts. There's a lot more to me than just the fact that I went through this surgery and did all this stuff. Um, I think if you were upon that one aspect of yourself, you've got worse problems. Um, and more to the point, too, I'm not a victim. I'm not, you know... <laughs> I think these people want to have attention on them. They want to have praise lavished on them. And that's not who I am. It's one of the reasons I kind of got off of Channel Lawson is that uh, you get people telling you all the time that you're great and wonderful. And after a while, you start becoming a narcissist. You start thinking that you can't do any wrong or that you're your opinion is truth. I'm just a person. I'm a regular person, just as scummy as the next person. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm in the wrong mindset. But that's how I feel about it, at least. Okay. Uh, Sophia? I would identify as a Pokemon trainer before I would identify <laughs> as a transsexual. <laughs> right, so um, it, it sounds like both of you kind of subscribe to the idea that... And this is what I've noticed, too, a lot, especially on the fucking internet and especially on Tumblr, is it seems that people want to be... Uh, they want a certain aspect of themselves to be the one defining thing. Um, it, and it seems to be sexuality is like the, the focal point of the day, right? It's agender this, it's binary that, it's, hey, hey, you know, pony can I... Uh, just, they, they, pick, they pick these weird things, and that has to be the... That's the most important thing to them, right? That, you know, uh, character or morality or um, merit or any of these other aspects of what a person is don't matter. It all pales in, compa or it pales in comparison to their sexuality. Um, would you would you agree with that? Do you think that people become way too focused on shit like that? Um, I'll jump right in. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's like, I mean, I'm also a lesbian. Do I need to run around? I mean, uh, for the sake of this conversation, I'm bringing it up. Uh, but it's like, do I go up to everyone I meet and be like, by the way, I'm a lesbian. By the way, I'm a lesbian. By the way, I'm, I'm a trans lesbian. By the way, I'm this. By the way, that. By the way, I'm a German Jew. By the way, I'm the No, it's like, who gives a fucking shit? It's like, my name's Sophia, I have a bachelor's degree in business administration, and I'm a gamer. That's all you fuck, and I play a lot of Magic the Gathering. Um, that's all you really need to know about me. Anything else, we could talk and be friends. It's like, none of that other shit matters. Unless you're trying to have sex with me, then conversation can get a little bit, you know, different. Um, <laughs> it's like, because that's the only time it really matters. So, um, why these people feel the need to play such a... I, pity is what I used to feel with these people. As I felt sorry that they have nothing in life that they can identify to and be a part of. It's like, I'm a gamer. I identify as a gamer. It's like, being a part of the video game community is like, 
my blood. My uncle worked at Atari when Atari was Atari. It's like, so we had the Atari computer system, the Atari 2600. Uh, my first own system was in, in Nintendo NES. And it's like, it, I, gaming has been my life longer than anything else. So it's like, you know, it's sad that these people don't have anything else, you know, to cling to or, you know, to call, uh, you know, their home or be a part of or whatever. Um, and I think the high they get off that, you know, narcissism or the oppression Olympics, as many of us like to say, um, it just keeps feeding their their illness. They're, they're, they have more things wrong with them in the DSM-5 than just transgenderism if they're even claiming to be trans. Okay, uh, Liz, what do you think? Uh, I agree with her. <laughs> You've got worse problems if all you identify is one small aspect of yourself, especially if you're using it as a platform for attention and money. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, you know, kind of, I, I guess, turning to LGBT, right? Um, I saw this brought up in chat. Other people have mentioned it. When you're looking at LGBT, it's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender. But transgender isn't really a sexual orientation, though, is it? So why is the T included in LGBT? That goes back to Stonewall. Um, or when, Trump in cafeteria. <laughs> yeah. Stonewall. So it, it's one of those things that uh, during Stonewall, when the, essentially the what many see as the launch of the LGBT uh, activism for the you know essentially for gay marriage and things like that, um, transgender people have been fighting right alongside with gays, and then. You also have the question of, well, what is a trans, a person who is medically transgender is how I prefer to say it. Um, it's like, but let's just say a trans person, what's their sexual orientation? It's like, I'm a woman who loves women, so I'm a lesbian. I'm legally a woman. It's like, so I need gay marriage in order to be able to marry a woman. So it's like we were all fighting for the exact same thing. Uh, I think once... And oh, fingers crossed, I hope that once gay marriage is legal in all 50 states and all the districts of Columbia and whatnot, that essentially it can dissolve. I mean, you will have a social community for you know dating and stuff like that, but it's like as far as the march for gay rights, then we will have achieved it. Uh, then it's like as far as trans people are concerned, uh, then there's just the medical advocacy, advocacy and making sure that we get access to progress proper medical treatment, which is what these kids need. They need mm -hmm. doctors. They don't need Tumblr posts. They don't need reblogs. They don't need retweets. They don't need Patreons. They need doctors. Agreed. Now, what what are your thoughts on, and, and you know, people always throw out the acronym, and I've seen it myself, you know, the LGBT, LMNOPQRS thing. <laughs> it, it seems like they're tacking on more and more shit as the days, you know, go by. Uh, is there a line? Is there some point where people say this is getting fucking stupid? Yeah, the line starts at T, and then I say I'm not with stupid, like that photo I linked you. <laughs> that, that's it's where like, you draw the line? That's where I draw the line. Queer queer is a word that my uh, racist stepfather uses to describe all gay people. So <laughs> it's like, if you want to call yourself queer, it's like that's basically, you know, like saying, well, I'm, I'm a nigger. It's like, it, it, okay, if you want to describe yourself as what many people in society call a derogatory term, I, 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 that's your prerogative, but I still think you're an idiot. It shows how uneducated you are. Um, it's like, uh, I, you know, and then other people are mentioning like asexual. It's like, I again, I say go, do, go see a doctor, make sure your hormone levels are okay, because not wanting to have sex is like the, <laughs> it's the cornerstone of uh, evolution. It's like there's something obviously wrong with you if you don't want to fuck anybody. <laughs> I guess for me, my concern is once, um, uh, like we were saying, once gay marriage is now in all 50 states, then what? When there's no more battles to fight, it, the, the trend, at least with feminism, seems to be let's create battles, let's, let's make shit up. And I certainly don't want to see it to go that route either. Now, wh what's your opinion on TERF? I've seen this term being brought up a lot. Uh, maybe one of you can explain it to me, because I haven't gotten around to looking into it. Uh... Sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, trans exclusionary radical feminist. Oh, f oh, the Raymanites. Yeah. yeah. Uh, followers of Jan Janus Raymond. Okay, so for uh, people who don't know who that is, there's a, a lesbian feminist who 
her name is Janice Raymond. She was an influential lesbian uh, ideologue. And uh, she is of the opinion that uh, trans people are basically spies for the patriarchy. You know, they're, uh, uh, they're infiltrators. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need a minute. Yeah. Yeah, because the idea, oh, well, you're a guy who's trying to sneak their way into women's spaces by having surgery as a girl. Um, and uh, as a result, they banned um, trans women from, like, a music festival that was really big. Um, and they, it's, it's bizarre because sometimes they, they team up with ultra-right Christians and it's freaking weird. They're, they're, they're the extreme of the extreme. You see, everyone, I'm really the Black Widow and that's why I talk about comic books so much. No, you know, going back to the going back to the turf thing. Um, I, I'm not sure if either of you've seen this, but it's a video that's up on YouTube called "Cultural Marxism: A Cis Story," and it revolves around uh, two lesbians on a college campus, and I believe about four or five people identifying as transsexual, and they get into an argument with the lesbian, saying that, oh, that, yeah, saying that they're discriminating because they won't um, they won't recognize um, what how did he put it his trans clit his penis as being a trans clit. Hmm. Um, you know, you know, you've got turf on one side. Would you say that they're the extreme of the other, where they're trying to tell a lesbian, a woman that wants to be with another woman, that no, you have to be with me, even though I still have a penis, I haven't had sexual reassignment surgery, and anything else is discriminatory. Um, for everyone listening, you can YouTube. Would you date a lesbian with a penis? Uh, the video has almost a hundred thousand views, and I wrote it and filmed it with my best friend Ariel, and we basically addressed that particular question um, and the comment section became so visceral from both sides the TERFs and the SJWs that we had to turn it off um, and we turned it off for the sake of our subscribers because they kept attacking them uh, like just non-stop like trying to police you know their identity or whatever it is basically you it's like Total Biscuit when he turned off his comments for all of his videos he's just like I'm done with this shit well, that particular video caused so much uh, outrage and vitriol from both sides of the fence that we were like, you know what? For the sake of our subscribers, we're just gonna we're just gonna turn this off. But the reality is, as I said in the video, and I said repeatedly in the comments section when our subscribers were getting attacked, is, no, I have a penis. I'm sorry that that offends you, but I'm not sorry. Um, but it's true. You know, it's like when I go to the bathroom, that's what I see. It's like when it comes time to have sex, that's what's there. It's like I don't like the fact that it's there, but it is a biological reality. I was born a natal male. I cannot change that, nor can I ever change that. It's like no matter what I do to my body, at the end of the day, when somebody does a blood test, they're going to know that I'm a male. And that right there, being able to say that, process it, acknowledge it, and accept it is what a healthy person does. What an unhealthy person does is go, you need to accept my female penis or my oversized clit. That is the sign of an unhealthy person that, in my opinion, is borderline rape. It's like because you're trying to emotionally and psychologically abuse someone to have sex with them and trying to use their cultish language against them to lure them into a position to have sex with them. You make them feel so bad about discriminating against you that they'll have sex with you. And that's, that's abuse. That's mental and emotional abuse. And it's like having been in emotional abusive relationships, it's like, uh, no, it's fucked up. Uh, and it's like, you, shouldn't, you just shouldn't do that. And it's like, and no one should give these people any credence, uh, uh, you know, or give them a platform. It's like, you just got to shut them the fuck up. So what do you think is happening with the LGBT community then? Because it seems like, you know, watching videos like that, and I've seen a few other similar ones, it seems that you're getting some pretty fucking radical people joining in that are shitting stuff up with buzzwords to the point of where you can't even really have a fucking conversation anymore. Um, well, what we've noticed on our YouTube channel is, again, ever since 2013, they've gotten more and more extreme and radical. And I think the problem is that uh, in California, we were dealing with Prop 8. Uh, for those of you who don't know what Prop 8 was, essentially it was a law that repealed gay marriage. 
Um, it's like we had gay marriage in the state of California, and then it slipped in under the radar, and then it basically nullified gay marriage and made it not a thing. Um, so at the time, the gay community was in pretty much a you know political nightmare, and you know when you're in a political nightmare, you kind of open your arms and say, everybody who can help me, help me. I need, I you know, we need you. All all hands on deck. And the problem with that is there was no vetting process, there was no nothing, it was just like, come on, come in, help us. And what happened was we got the help we needed and then the crazy people stayed. Uh, and then they camped out and they said, ooh, I like it here. I'm going to make this my home. And then they started tone policing people. I mean, the best way to really understand what happened to the gay community, if you can't relate to any of this at all, is to look at what happened to the bronies and what those people did to those poor guys. It's like how they tone police them and just emasculated and more than they were emasculating themselves. Sorry, bronies. No, <laughs> gotta get a jab when I can. Uh, it's like, but no, what they did to those guys was just cruel and mean. And now they've done it to every single fucking community, whether it's comic books, whether it's video games, whether it's the gay community, whatever. They just go in, they squat, and they just bring their PC bullshit fucking culture, and they never shut the fuck up. And they're so goddamn loud that people think that that's the majority of the community. When the reality is most trans people will never tell you that they're trans. Mm -hmm. Never. In fact, the only reason I came out was because somebody had to fucking say no, that this isn't, you know, what's going on. Because if most of you met me in real life, you'd have no fucking clue I was trans. You'd probably be buying me free drinks at the bar all night long. Uh, and you might call bullshit because the way my mic sounds, but I'm really fucking hot. <laughs> So it's like, and that's well, why a lot. That's why well, a lot yeah, of. Yeah, but when I run into a woman at the bar, the first thing I do is check for a prostate. So <laughs> there you go. You you can get all the surgery you want, but that little organ's staying put. <laughs> so well, but the question is, how are you checking that prostate? <laughs> well, that requires a lot of gloves, but luckily my. Yeah, turn their head and cough, dude. Yeah. <laughs> there are two kinds of gloves for some love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, th this brings up, uh, I guess, another point, and this is something chat's asking, this is shit other people are asking. Um, uh, you meet somebody at a bar. Uh, what, oh, you know, what obligation is there for them to inform you of what they are, who they are? Uh, you know, some people say it's deceptive not to say, yeah, I'm transsexual. Other people say, you know, why would that matter? What, what's your take on it? Right, that's like the whole argument with the cotton ceiling or something like that. I, I don't know, but there's two schools of thoughts, at least the ones that of other trans people that I... Um, spoke with, the idea is that you divulge everything kind of at the get-go, so, you know, your partner or whomever you're interested in having sex with kind of knows what they're getting into. The other side of the coin is, well, I would prefer not to get shot down immediately out of the gate and, you know, see if they're actually worth dating and maybe if there's an emotional connection there, they can overcome that. Personally, I, I you can't build a relation on or relationship on half-truths everything kind of at the get-go myself. Okay, uh, Sophia? Um, I used to fall into the first camp and now I'm a part of the second camp. Um, I, it, it was uncomfortable to, because again, it's, it's, a, it's a level of maturity. It's like you do want to get to know a person and see if they're worth dating before you basically, um, you know, again, what the fuck, before you reveal your secret identity. Uh, uh, it's like you do, you kind of want to get to know a person first. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, well, we're, we're talking about sex, and this person has every right to know. So it's like after getting my heart broken, uh, you know, being in the first camp of, well, let me get to know you, and then, you know, I had a third date rule. It's like on the third date, that's what I'd tell them. And then I realized, you know what? I'm wasting money on three dates. It's, it's really, I'm wasting money. I'm wasting time. Uh, it's not fair to them. Uh, I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is really fucked up. Like, that was the, real, the ultimate conclusion I came to. I was like, this is really fucked up. It's like, they have every right to know who you are right out the gate. So, um, true story, the girl that I've been uh, living with for over a year, we've been together a year and a half, um, we met at a lesbian event. I had only been there for 15 minutes, and I said out loud to one of my friends, I was like, damn, there are at least 10 girls in here tonight that I'd like to fuck. And she turns around, and she goes, do I make the cut? Not even kidding. And I looked her up and down, and I was like, we'll see. Well, hey, I made the cut. 
It's like five minutes later, I tell her, <laughs> by the way. Sorry, uh, couldn't help it. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, That go ahead. one flew right over my head because I was in the middle of my story. I was going. Um, so it's like five minutes later. Uh, I, I've already bought her a drink. We're on the dance floor. And um, she says to me, I see this ending at your, your place tonight. And I say, that's fine, but you need to know that I'm trans. And within 15 minutes later, we were back in my apartment. And like I said, we've been together a year and a half. So honesty is always the best policy, I found. Okay. All right. Well, I, I think we'll kind of move on from that now to uh, questions I was asked ahead of time. Uh, and shit, you're obviously seeing, uh, if you're looking at the chat, flying through. So the first one would be, uh, transsexuals are degenerates. What is your response to that? That uh, transsexuality is uh, a moral failing or that it has a negative impact upon society or teaches norms that are contrary to a healthy, uh, I, I don't know, a, a healthy society. What would your response to those uh, kind of statements be? I guess for me it was... Uh what happens when an, uh, what is, what's the phrase, an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Um, I can't change who I am. Um, and he was way into the, you know, the pray the gay away. And um, his faith is very deeply ingrained to who he is as an individual. And for him, it's like asking him to abandon that, for, as it was for me. So I guess on some level we're all degenerates, but you know what? I... I would argue for, as a personal thing, I'm definitely a better person for where I was to where I am now. And I can say if I hadn't gone down this road, I probably wouldn't be alive. Um, so you can argue the merits of that either way, but you know, from a purely pragmatic standpoint, I'm paying taxes, I'm, uh, you know, I'm working hours, I'm doing my thing, so... Uh, okay. I, I think it's a loaded question, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Sophia? I think that when you look at any community, you're going to find degenerates. <laughs> it's like, and some of them are in the chat right now. <laughs> so uh, it's like, you know, wherever you go, there's going to be fucked up people. I mean, you look at something as simplistic as feminism, where it's supposed to be anytime, you know, you corner one of their radicals and you say, you know, they immediately say, well, feminism is about the equalization of uh, economics and social of men and women. And then, then, you know, the next minute they're tweeting, kill all men. So it's like, you know, every community's got fucked up people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I guess another point that's been raised uh, on a few of the, the boards that I frequent, uh, and again, probably in chat too, you're going to see it, uh, would be, and this is a follow-up to the degeneracy question, but uh, what of the, you know, kind of acceptance by increments? That in the 60s, uh, well, the 50s and the 60s, homosexuality was seen as just uh, completely taboo. It can't be discussed. It can't be dealt with in society. And now we're at the point where gay marriage is becoming legalized. Uh, now we're seeing transsexuality coming into acceptance. Uh, people have raised the issue of, well, what's going to happen next? Are we going to have people saying that pedophilia or pedosexuality is something that is acceptable? You know, something that we can't see as being okay now, but by increments will eventually end up there. What would your response be to that kind of thing? Well, did allowing, uh, you know, mixed marriages, did that turn people black? I mean, I think pedophilia is, is different because it's a child can't provide uh, consent or consensuality it's it, it's not it's for me it's a personal thing it's i'm not trying to inflict anything different or, or damaging onto anybody else and as i said it was it was my body to change ho however i wanted to um, but i think that the slippery slope argument falls flat because for me it's what i wanted to do a child doesn't have a say in, in their whether they want to be abused or not. Okay, uh, Sophia? I think pedophiles try to creep into any community they can to try to get anything they can when they can. Um, and that's no exception to the gay community, it's no exception to the trans community. Uh, there was this whole movement to try to get um, uh, pedophilia changed to a sexual orientation. It's like, again, people out of their fucking minds, they need doctors, not uh, empowerment. They're they're sickos. I mean, that's you know. I mean, not only is it a crime, it's immoral and reprehensible. It's like to do that to a child that has absolutely no ability to consent. 
Um, it just it, it's just mind blowing that anybody could be so sadist. Uh, well, and the uh, chat's response, uh, Liz, was uh, uh, mixed marriages did in fact turn people black by <laughs> giving them a lot of children. I suppose, yeah. But touche, well, chat. Touche. I wiped it on my petard. <laughs> But you, so you don't see an inherent risk in that. You don't think that uh, you know this this argument has any weight to it. That no. that if society becomes more tolerant of things that they're not tolerant of now, uh, moving from homosexuality to transsexuality, you don't think that 50 years from now we'll be having a discussion where pedophiles are saying, "Well, I'm not hurting anyone. Uh, I'm a pedophile, but I'm not a child molester. I keep to myself, kind of thing. And and I should be left to myself, and it should be an accepted form of being. And I, you know, you should add a P to the end of uh, LGBT." Oh, Jesus Christ, pray the day that never happens. Um, that, it's just asinine. Those people are nuts. They need locked the fuck up. That's really what needs to happen. No, oh, Liz? They, they, they do. They need locked up. And, and it's like, if if not for, uh, you know, certainly for the safety of children, but they need locked up for the safety of themselves. Okay. Yeah. You know, the sad thing is, is in a way I can actually see what you're saying happening, Jim. Where it's, you know, hey, everybody else has these benefits, but we don't. Um, and in that respect, um, there's abuse that's happening. I mean, that, the, the difference is, is that a child, like I said, that this isn't benefiting them, it's benefiting the, the asshole who's taking advantage of them. Um, Right, but I mean, I, I think here's where part of the the argument comes, or at least this is what I think the latest underneath it is. If you're setting up a situation in which a child can say, at a young age, I feel that I identify as this gender, or I feel I identify this way, and I want to have hormone therapy. If you start letting them make these kind of adult decisions at a young age, could not a pedophile make the argument that, well, what if the child consents? I mean, if they're adult enough to make the decision that they want to be a different sex than they're born, why couldn't they choose their sexual attraction at the age of 10 if they want to change their gender at the age of 11? Right, and that goes back to what I said earlier. That's why, again, I don't, you shouldn't give that kind of power to a child. And I'm sure, you know, a pedophile that wants to be accepted in society would make that argument. I mean, sometimes you have to think like your enemy, I guess, but, you know, it's, those people are sick. Well, if pedophilia is a mental disorder, then it should be treated um, with medication, or if they're, if they're a danger or risk to other people, then they should be in a situation where they cannot do that. Um, I suppose transsexuality is something that you have to treat with medicine and whatever, or surgery or what have you, but... Again, the distinction here is that I'm not, I'm not damaging another person by going at it. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think the whole like you know slippery slope. It's like the same thing. You know, the rednecks in you know, the South were saying that, oh, gay marriage, and now they're gonna want bestiality, and people want to marry their pets. It's like it's that kind of uh, hyperbolic uh, way of thinking. It's like. Are there crazy people who think that you should be able to marry your pets? Absolutely. Will society ever accept that as the, as something that's the mainstream? Ah, fucking no. It's like, Jesus Christ. It's like, I know we look at the internet and people are pretty freaking retarded, but I have to have more faith in humanity than that. We may not have flying cars yet, but we do carry around alien technology in our pockets every day and we call them cell phones. So it's like, we've come a long way. <laughs> Well, in all fairness, though, to the slippery slope argument, I, I get what you're saying, too. I mean, I hear people bring that up as a fallacy in this kind of an argument. But uh, I'm sure if you were sitting around in the 1800s and somebody said to you, well, we're going to let Native, American votes, or Native Americans vote, but don't worry, women will never vote. That's a stupid slippery slope argument. Letting, letting them vote will never end up at women voting, but we did. It went right. from one group to another group to another group to another group till everybody was voting. Yeah, and that's uh, what we call egalitarianism. No, no, but I mean, what I'm saying is the same argument could have made, or could have been made back then by them oh, saying, sorry. we're going to let this one group vote, and no other group is going to vote, and thinking otherwise is foolish. Uh, you know, you could compare it to this argument of, well, if we, you know, accept in society homosexuality and transsexuality, where are we headed? Yeah, well, and if you would have been making that argument then, you were probably a slave owner 
or had just got done scalping and butchering hundreds of thousands of Indians. So, <laughs> but, but but Sophia, don't you see the risk though that we're facing? Uh, uh, okay, think of what you just said. Yeah, if you were making that argument now, we'd look at it like that, right? But. 50 years from now, couldn't somebody look back and say about us three, well, you must have been a bigot and intolerant asshole for saying that pedophiles shouldn't be allowed to have uh, equal rights in, you know, how they express themselves sexually. Well, I think the, um, the difference between allowing other segments to vote is that it created a more open society and it benefited society at large. Um, Pedophilia has very long-lasting, damaging effects to the children that it's done to. Um, so if a society, if we decide that, okay, we're going to allow for this happening, we're also going to be tacitly allowing for um, all sorts of other problems to occur as well. Um, in this case, me being able to vote or get married or, um, or to change my gender doesn't damage others. So... I can understand. I, I no. I, I get what you're saying, but um, I think it would be a much greater impact for society in a far worse way if that were to go that direction. I think as a result of that, most people would not agree to that. Okay, and again, I just want to. I'm, I'm just following this argument out as mm -hmm. much as I can because it's one that it, it's getting brought up. So of course, no, and it always does. There's no, there's no doubt about that. I, it. it, it Slippery soap arguments happen all the fucking time, so it's it's nothing that I'm not used to. Uh, I just think it's a bit hyperbolic. <laughs> oh, so you mispronounced it. It's hyperbole. Hyperbole. Hyper uh, hyperbole. Uh, hyperbole. It's, that's what I've been told. That's a you know correct pronunciation of it. So I, that's what I've been going with for years now. Um, okay, I've I've lived all over the United States. People pronounce words differently no matter where you go. In in Vermont, <laughs> they call coyotes coyotes. So. <laughs> Do they now? Yeah. Um, it, you know, and, and kind of, I, I guess, finishing up with this, uh, you know, one of the defining characteristics of a, a social justice warrior seems to be their thin skin. Yeah. Um, fuck yeah. You, you, you'll you'll notice this shit on Twitter. You'll notice it on Tumblr. On any any website you go to, uh, YouTube doesn't matter. The I'm, second they I'm get blocking you just for saying that. Yeah, exactly. I'm blocking you. I'm banning you. I refuse to talk to you. Or they'll get a jab in, and then they'll get angry if you retaliate, if you retort. Um, what you, you, you know, you can see the chat. Is this triggering you? Are are you breaking down? <laughs> with you know, I, people. I, I, I said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm not a victim. I'm not. Yeah, I've been reading the chat. I don't care. I'm not doing this for for a, pol uh, a political platform. I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. I think honestly, if you're the, the, the SJWs, the, the, the feminazis, they're not interested in creating a dialogue. They're interested in getting a sound box. They're interested in um, clamping down on dialogue, of censorship, of, of eliminating discussion. And for me, this is the best way that I can say, you know what, judge for yourself. If you think I'm nuts, well, you know what, there's tons of people in the chat I'm never going to be friends with, and I doubt that anything I say is going to change their opinion. You know what, that's their right. It's the right of free speech. But SJ, SJWs and feminazis are not interested in free speech, and that's what I'm concerned about. Do you, do you think that maybe the perception of what uh, you know transsexuals are like online has been tainted by SJWs in that sense? I mean, oh, Jesus Christ, this Absolutely. chat's a perfect example of it. Well, I mean, don't blame the chat. I blame uh, the videos of where it's the the bald object saying "die to scum," or you know. That's that's the public perception. That's what's getting right. circulated. And if it's that kind of extreme, that kind of insanity, that's what most people are going to see as being normal to that movement. And it's not the case like that. So you guys can handle the banter, essentially, is what you're saying. Oh, of, of course, course I can. Yeah, no, gee, I'm surprised they actually toned down on the word nigger. I'm surprised. Like they before the when the chat started, it's like that's all I heard was nigger, 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 nigger. Now I just see tranny, 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 tranny. And for the people just joining, my Twitter handle used to be at hidden tranny. So if you think you're offending me, you are sorely mistaken. Well, yeah, and getting, I guess, to um, a, a couple other things we probably should touch on. Uh, let's talk about preferred pronouns. What uh, most people, th you know, and I'm in this camp too. I think it's ridiculous, personally. Um, what are, What are your opinions on that? What do you think when somebody says you need to refer to me as Zims or and Zem rather than him or her or they or them? Where's that laugh track button? <laughs> Huh. 
There we go. There we go. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the reality of it. I, if if uh, somebody needs to ask you what your gender are, is, I kind of, I, and I know this is a bit arrogant, but it's like, are you doing it right? <laughs> that's, I, you know, I, and I know people fucking hate me for that, but it's just like, the there was an article recently, if you want to call it an article, it's just another fucking blog editorial about is passing a, 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 an offensive term, and it's just like, yeah, to people who can't pass. And it's just like, uh, you know, that's their problem. I, and my suggestion to them is watch some makeup tutorials. It's like take a vo vocal uh, coaching lesson. I mean, granted, I know I've spent years getting my voice to this octave, and I'm still working on it. But, um, no, it's like, uh, you know, passing is a lot of fucking work. But the reality is when you're out in public, people are very perceptive and can see you and pretty much know what you are just by looking at you. If you need to say this is my preferred pronoun, I, I, I really got to say, what are you doing wrong? Because it's like it, it should never, you know, it's like it, it would be like if we were all hanging out at a comic book store and I walked up to you and you're a dude and you were just like, and I said, what's your preferred pronoun? You'd look at me and go, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, uh, it's not it's a it's a bizarre internet phenomenon, but it, it seems to be creeping into real life. I mean, Facebook now don't they have the preferred pronoun mm -hmm. option uh, listed in their in their little spiel of uh, genders and everything else? Well, I guess if you you are trying and you say if, if there's somebody who is androgynous and you genuinely don't know, if you approach it as okay, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but which pronoun should I go with if it's anything other than he or she? Then it's like okay, I'm not having a conversation with you. Because you're trying to, you're extending a hand to saying, hey, I'm trying to understand and be reasonable, but the, the hair trigger response of being offended at that is not the one to go with. And for me personally, anything other than he or she is just, it, it, it flies into crazy town. What are your thoughts on uh, the use of cis? I know that this was, you know, oh. trans and cis taken from, you know, uh, from science essentially, and then applied to this kind of shit. But what what do you think of that? Uh, the term cis. I think it's pathetic. I mean, <sighs> transsexuality is is a statistical anomaly. It's very very rare, and I guess for me, it from calling somebody cis gendered is almost like saying, oh, well, it's not normal, so I have to... Male and female is normal. That's, that's a norm that our society is built upon. Cis adding that is not. And it's trying to say that uh, transsexuality is, is so common that it's, it's everything, and everyone is trans, and it's not the case. And I, it, it makes me very sad. It's just, oh, grow up. Uh, Sophia? I didn't know what the word meant until 2013. I had never heard it before, and at that point, I'd already been on hormones for two years. So, I mean, it, again, if you guys use Google Trends, you'll see that this is, like, SJWs have a new word that crops up every three to six months. Uh, it's like, and Freud would be rolling in his fucking grave if he knew what they were doing to the word pansexual. So it's like, it, you know, they've bastardized and, you know, used these words to make themselves seem more important than they really are. Um, I think the other issue is, again, it goes to, and we see this in the gaming community all the fucking time, is the westernization of words. Um, you know, gender and sex in most English-speaking countries, it's just a synonym. It's the same word. And in many countries, they don't even have a different word for sex or gender. So it's like in the, like in England, they might say natal sex, uh, you know, instead of gender, you know, whatever. When you know they're referring to something like this, because the, you know you're trying to refer to what you were genetically born as. Um, but it's like in most languages, male, female, boy, girl, it, it sex, gender, they mean exactly the same thing. So it's like saying cisgender is like basically saying that. Well, you have cisgenders and transgender, and transgender is agender, and it's not. It's like the phonetics of transgender is transitional sex. You're it, transitioning. For me, it always, I always thought it was transitioning. Right. Yeah, it's trans it, it literally means transitional sex. You're transitioning from one sex to the other. So again, it's like you get these nutbags with their non-gender binary shit, and then they say they're trans, and be like, what are you transitioning to? A black hole? Dark matter? 
Like, it's like, what the fuck are you trying to say? Um, so it, it's like they've turned the word transsexual to mean something completely different than it actually means. So they've just bastardized the English language to the point where it's just like, uh, you know, uh, what's agency? There's another one. It's like another word where it's just like agency is something where you know, you have an agent who helps you, you know, uh, get jobs and work in Hollywood, and now they've turned it into this whole political statement of like, oh, you're taking away a person's agency, and you're like, what the fuck are you even talking about? No, uh, I saw this one brought up earlier, uh, and this is happening on Tumblr. I, you know, it, it, I, I'm fairly certain this started as a bullshit joke, but now people have taken the fucking uh, ball and ran with it. Uh, transracial. <laughs> Trans nigger. That's what I called it. Yeah, I think I, I think I call I think I call it trans nigger long before that picked up on the internet. <laughs> but people are taking it people are taking it seriously. They're saying oh. I feel like I was born in the wrong race. Of course, you know that's Poe's uh, that that started off as Poe's law, and these SJWs are so fucking crazy that they took it serious because it's like I started saying the term trans nigger when Michael Jackson lost his fucking mind, and it's just like because we saw that it's. Like, <laughs> it's like, and it's like, and look, you know, look at him. I mean, total woohoo, nut so bag. So, so this, it's this just, is a thing now. Huh? Yeah, this is oh, this yeah. is a legitimate thing. Yeah, trans. Uh, well, yeah, uh, most people <laughs> you could call it trans nigger, but they're calling it transracial. Is what they refer to it as. I, you know, I feel like I was born this, or I feel like I was born that. I think it's their way of getting around their bullshit uh, idea of cultural appropriation. Like, I want to have, I want to have dreadlocks, so I'm gonna really pretend I'm black now. That kind of shit. What's up, my yellow brother? Homeboy thinks he's Chinese. That would be a not another teen movie quote for those of you in the know. Back when Chris Evans was a tiny little skinny dweeb with black hair. So it, it, it seems that both of you, uh, you know, kind of summing up kind of the stuff we've been talking about, it, it, it seems like you both experienced this kind of crazy shit that's on online, this SJW stuff. Do you yeah. think? Do you think more people in LGBT, do you think more people in the trans community need to fucking speak up so people don't think you're all crazy? I mean, do you think they need to say, listen, this isn't this isn't how we are. These are a subsect of people that are attention-whoring narcissists that um, are fucking everything up for everybody? I would say yes. Um, I don't know. I'm a, I, I, I read history, so I read up on the, the Spanish Civil War, and it literally got so extreme where it turned into fascist versus versus communists, if the middle spoke up and said, no, we got to find a better solution than this, um, people wouldn't be lined up against the wall and shot. So you got to, I, I think it's, it's sort of a, a two-part thing. I think trans people do need to rein it in a little bit, um, especially now that there are actually protective laws in place. Ten years ago, there were not um, employment protection laws, and gay marriage is now taking, getting enough steam where in 20 years it's going to be a, a, every 50, all 50 states have it. So I think part of it is, okay, slow down, take a deep breath, realize where you're at, and also say, you know what, we do not support this, cr this crazy reactionary bullshit. Okay, uh, Sophia? The problem is for a lot of people it's going to be a conflict of interest. Um, most, like I said, most trans people you want to call them that, um, they don't even identify as trans. They have already gone through the surgery. They already are working. A lot of people, myself included, after they transition, they move to a completely new city. It's like we build a completely new identity around the person that we, you know, were destined to become uh, and usually leave to dust, you know, our past. Uh, and a lot of people, once they've done that, you know, it's uh, they they don't want to be a light shined on them. They want to be left the fuck alone, and they want to be uh, treated just like everyone else. I mean, that's what real equality is: is just being treated like everyone else. I think when we look at the pillars of eternity situation, where it's like, look, one, the joke wasn't he. The, the guy wasn't he killed himself because he fucked a tranny. So get the joke right for starters. Um, it's like, but two, it's like, if you're offended by that, that's good. That means that you're, you know, actively being participated in society, that somebody is making a joke of you. And now you have to accept that joke because a part of being equal is uh, people are going to fuck with you. And, have and that's perfectly skin. fine. Mm -hmm. You know, 
It's like, you know, you watch a stand-up comedy act, and it's like they're going to make, you know, you watch something like Russell Peters, and he's going to, you know, make fun of every, you know, race and cultural background in the audience or whatever, and it's like, you know, when he makes fun of you, it's like you have two choices. You can either go, there it is, I'm accepted into society, that, you know, people can make fun of me, and I can look at it and go, <laughs> you know, haha, that's funny, or I can go, no, that's not so funny, but not, you know, not take it personal. It's like that's a part of being, you know, accepted. And I think for this SJW outrage culture, they don't want to be accepted. They want right. to be ostracized so they can be professional victims, so they can set up their Patreons and they can just go, give me money, look at me, I'm oppressed, oh my god, look at me, look at me, while the rest of us are just going, no thanks, look at, look at me for where my talents are. It's like, you want somebody that's going to get your numbers up and uh, help market and you know brand recognition or whatever, it's like, that's my area of expertise and that's what I'm going to help you do. It's like, but you think I'm going to be out there just going, oh my god, uh, my boobs hurt because I just had surgery, will you please give me money? Like, that's fucking retarded. Well, wasn't there a situation with that? I, I'm vaguely remembering somebody who was a game developer that, god damn, I wish I remember the details Chloe on Chloe Seagal. Was that the one that put up the that's Kickstarter fine. and then used the money for the surgery? Yes. Um, oh, that, that, yeah. I've actually talked to Chloe about that, and she says it's one giant misunderstanding, and it's just, you know, one side versus the other side. So it's like, all I know is that Indiegogo, I think it was an Indiegogo campaign or whatever, they ultimately didn't give her the money. Oh, so they withheld it. They withheld it because um, it had come to light that it wasn't going to be used for the development of a game, so they were just like, Shut down. Like we're not. We're, we're, this. That's not what this service is for. Um, and it's like, unfortunately, you see a lot of e-bagging uh, from the trans community because, again, this is the only thing you people will hear me advocating for this entire stream is because of the in uh, the lack of ability to proper medical treatment. So it's like when we fix that, then you will see less of it because it's like. People are, you know, especially if they're suffering from extreme body dysmorphism, it's like they need the they need some kind of care, and they're not getting it. And if they don't have access to it, then they're going to be on the internet begging for money for it. Uh, and it's like sometimes these people can become very dangerous, uh, and to themselves mostly, it's like you know, or they just become professional victims, and then it's mm -hmm. like just constantly. It, I call it empathy dollars. It's like where they're constantly trying to find new people to give them empathy dollars. Uh, I think Brianna Wu is a perfect example of that. Well, yeah, Just, people wanted, um, speaking of Brianna Wu, people wanted to hear, uh, especially your, Sophia, uh, your opinion on this because uh, they were <laughs> interested because Brianna Wu has been in the fucking media now for five or six months uh, running, running uh, rampant on every uh, mainstream media channel and uh, getting her talking points out there. What's your take on Brianna? Well, if you would have asked me that six months ago, I would have had a more respectful answer, but now she's just a train wreck tranny. Um, when she first injected herself into um, Gamergate, and you can watch my YouTube video on the hidden tranny files uh, about Eric Johnson at Recode and when I debunked Brianna Wu, if you want to figure out how she ended up on television. So she, you know, we all know the story. She went to 4chan um, to start shit and then, uh, you know, played up the victim card. But if you look at the history of it, she never mentioned that she was trans until way late in the game. Uh, people brought it up. Uh, you know, people did their background research and they found out all about John. Uh, ooh, dead naming. Ooh. Um, yes, I'm seeing it in the chat too. John Flint. It's like we all know. Uh, and it's like everybody was digging up all this stuff. And for a while, it was the only thing I could actually find redeeming about her is the fact that she wasn't playing the trans card as a reason why people were giving her shit. They were giving her shit because she's just an asshole on the internet. Um, but. Uh, you know, eventually she ended up playing the trans card when, uh, you know, the whole harassment female in video game empathy dollars started wearing off. So then you need a new thing. And uh, for those of you who have read Brianna Wu's live journal, she doesn't even mention the fact that her surgery back when she had it was a sex change operation. And that's very common for people that, um, 
you know, want to transition and don't want to be seen as transsexuals. So it's like she didn't play the SJW bullshit card until the feminist propaganda anti-gamer game like empathy dollar train ran out. And then she played it, and then it was just like, God, you're, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, somebody's, uh, somebody's asking me to bring up I, uh, this person. I don't know, Rachel Burke. Does anybody, do either, you know, who the fuck that is? No, nope. Rain doesn't ring a bell. Sorry, chat. Uh, I thought maybe it was another, another uh, empathy dollar seeking Patreon user. Uh, uh, there are so the damn many people. Come on, I can't keep track of all of them. <laughs> Oh yeah, it, it is hard. It, you know, and uh, one of the things you brought up, dead naming. I, I know what the term is. I, I'm curious about this. Kind of going back to the thick skin versus SJWs who get freaked out about shit. You know, you mentioned that uh, people when they transition, they want to move on and start their new life. And then you know, there's this term, dead naming. You know, how could you do that? How could you use the the name from the past life that's you know upsetting to somebody who who's gone through all of this shit? Um, it seems to me that on the internet, everything is fair game. That mm -hmm. no matter what you are, who you are, there's going to be an aspect that people are going to shit all over. Oh, uh, cool. my, myself in particular, I, I frequent, I browse poll all the time, but I'm dating an Asian girl. So they fucking ride my ass about being a race mixer, right? That I, I hear that shit all the time. Yeah, you know, I've got yellow fever, all of that kind of stuff. Would dead naming not just be another aspect of that, though? I mean, people are going to look to fuck with you in any way they can. So why why create the I guess the unique term for it? Why not just consider it what it normally is on the internet? You're just getting fucked with. They're just using anything they can. If you're overweight, they're going to make fun of you for being fat. If you're gay, they're going to call you a faggot. If you're uh, transsexual, they're going to use your old name. If you're dating an Asian chick, you're a race mixer. So yeah. what, what what's your thought on dead naming? Then given that, to be honest, I had never heard the term before, and I always just assumed like what you said. Pe people are just being assholes. That's what they do on the internet. So I agree fully with you. Why, why add another term to the lexicon that's already too fucking big? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, they're already bringing up Yoko. And by the way, chat, I'm not, uh, people are saying I'm trans-Jewish or trans faggot I'm a trans-cuck. I'm waiting for Jamal to show up. <laughs> <laughs> the thinking man's up. fetish. That's, that's right. The, we can get the king of cuck in here. I could send him a message on Skype. Uh, I don't know if he could verify that quickly enough to get into this chat. <laughs> Uh, but uh, Sophia, uh, you know, what's your take on it? What do you think of dead naming? I think you both nailed it. I also think that, uh, it, you know, it it's a respect issue. If somebody's dead naming you, it's probably because you did something to piss them off. Uh, <laughs> I mean, or they want to fuck with you, and it's like so you have to ask mm -hmm. yourself, you know, how did you get yourself in a situation where people want to fuck with you? And it's like, and odds are, you you were dead named because you were an asshole. Um, and then you have um, how that one, what was, she was an executive or something, and she did a lot of like some someone in the industry like did a lot of really shady shit uh, when she was a guy, uh, or you know living as a male and the male avatar and everything like that. Uh, and so Ralph did an article where he quote unquote dead named her and talked about all the fucked up shit she did when she was living as a male. And, you know, the SJWs lost their fucking mind, they called him transphobic, and that he hates trans people, blah, 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 even though I talk to Ralph every once in a while, I think he's really funny. Um, and it's just like, yes, he can he can use the I have a trans follower defense, I don't give a fuck. Um, but, uh, you know, a person's past is very relevant. It's like, you know, if I was a criminal and then changed my name, there's a reason why you have to go to court to have your name and gender changed. It's like, it's mm -hmm. to prevent people from trying to hide, you know, past sins or identities or whatever. And when you apply for a job, you still have to give what your former legal name was so they can do a proper background check on you. So it, it's, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you want to put yourself in the public image, uh, you know, or, you know, in the public eye or whatever, then you better be ready for it. Because everything you've done is fair game. Uh, and the more fucked up shit you did, the more likely it's going to come to light. And the reality so. is, too, that even if you are transgender or a minority or somebody who's oppressed, that doesn't give you a free pass. That doesn't mean that you're, you're somehow immune for criticism or that you can do no wrong or that you're not a racist. Absolutely. Um, you're, you're just, like you said, you're, just, you're as much an asshole as anybody else is. Right. It, it would seem to me that uh, especially quality is getting fucked with equally on the internet, people. We all know this. 
<laughs> right. I mean, that's half the charm of the internet, though. It's a chaos. <laughs> it's people throwing shit at you as much mm -hmm. as they can and seeing what sticks. Um, so yeah, I, I always found the the term dead naming a little a, a little weird. I mean, I, I get what they're saying, but then again, at the same time, it's you're getting fucked with. I mean, that's yeah. that's what the yeah. internet is. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Yeah. No, it's it's it. Is it disrespectful? Absolutely. But sure. what did you do? What did what did you do? It's like sometimes I feel like all of these SJWs, even if they're thirty years old, I feel like they're children, and I just want to look them and look them dead in the face. But like, what did you do? What did you do? Because no one would just do that to you, just like to just randomly show up at your house and be like, by the way, you're so and so. No one's fucking doing that unless they're just batshit insane. It's like so. The question is. What did you do? <laughs> Chat's worried that I'm becoming an SJW. They, oh, they, they're Jesus afraid Christ. that... Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. That, uh, I, I don't use proper pronouns, Chat. Uh, I'm sorry. And uh, I, I fucking hate Tumblr, and I pretty much hate everything related to it, which is where the majority of the shit comes from, at least online. Uh, what is Jade's actual ethnicity? She's black. She's just oh. very... She's transracial. You didn't know it. Now, now yeah. you do. She's She's black. She changed herself. Yeah. You know, it's like the whole, um, you know, I, not to go too far off the wagons, but it's like what the gaming's media has done to Anita Sarkeesian. It's like the vagina defense. It's like, oh, she's immune from criticism because she has a vagina. It's like, fuck you. No, it's not how this works. I'm surprised that uh, Anita Sarkeesian isn't being called out for a female supremacist because that's <laughs> what she. That's what she seems to come off like as to me. She's saying, "Oh well, we can't. Uh, yeah, women should be in in fields of study that they're underrepresented, even if they don't want to be there." It's like, what kind of communistic, fucked up shit is that? So you guys believe that? Uh, you sound like you're you're pretty pro free speech. That I mean, nobody should be. Everybody's fair game. You can't hide behind right. some bullshit like I'm a woman or I'm gay or I'm trans or I'm this or I'm that. It's pretty much. You are what you are, and if you're a dick, you're gonna get fucked with. Right, free speech. If you put, put it out on the, the internet, market. if you put it on the internet, expect it to come back to bite you in the ass. Yeah, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I'd, uh, I'd do that. Uh, what's that? Jim uses proper pronouns and claims not to. I, <laughs> would you? Okay. Well, I, you, I guess chat wants me to refer to you both as he and him uh, to calm them down, but. Uh, yeah, I, fuck. I think we covered a, I covered a lot of shit. I mean, is there anything in particular you guys want to uh, talk about? Is there anything in particular related to social justice that uh, does uh, piss you yeah. off? Shuan had just asked uh, about the bathroom situation. Oh, that's actually a good question. I, I was looking at a case. There were a couple of cases. I, I think you're talking about uh, people that uh, use one bathroom or another, but it's different than their uh, what would you call it? Their natal sex? Is that the term they're using in Europe? Or natal gender? Or whatever. Sex or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I know there was one case where uh, Planet Fitness, a woman complained because a man had gone into the uh, women's locker room, and mm -hmm. she brought it up, and they, they, what the hell is Planet Fitness's um, little term, a no-judgment zone? And they huh. told her that she had no right to complain, so she told other patrons there, and they basically rescinded her membership, called her a bigot, and threw her out. Um, wow. There was another case at a university where um, a mother complained because her daughter was using the restroom and uh, you know a transgendered man came in and she was like I just don't feel comfortable uh, what do you see the issue as I mean women express concerns over safety versus people saying they have a right to use the restroom because they identify as this now what's where's the line how do you look at that you want to go first iron uh, Jesus I think for me um, if I was in a public setting and uh, you were pre-op uh, I wouldn't want to go that route anyway. Um, so for me, I guess it was never an issue, but more to the point, I also don't think I, if I had a child in a in a women's locker room and a guy came in, I think that would be a huge freaking problem. Um, so maybe a third option is viable if you're if you're pre-op or something. I don't know. Uh, for me, it, it's it's a slippery slope either way. Um, I don't really have an answer apart from it, I could see it, it being abused really badly. Um, so, sorry, that's not really a response. No, it's fine. It, nobody expects you to have uh, you know all the answers. Um, Sophia, do you have any thoughts on it, or are you kind of flummoxed about it too? Oh no, I'm, I, I, I've been dealing with this issue for years. I came out socially. Um, when I was 21, and it's been, a, and I didn't start hormone therapy uh, until I was 24. 
five-ish um, because I wanted to answer the question of do I want to have children. Um, so that's what took me so long to start hormone therapy. And throughout that entire process, it's it really determined like uh, kind of like checking my, not my privilege, but checking how I look in the mirror. And it's like, I know what I look like on certain days. I mean, this is the before time and the long, long ago. Um, and it's like, I would never put myself in a situation where I right. would feel unsafe. I would never get naked around people I didn't know. Yeah. Um, and I think that, again, it goes to show you that, you know, when we're dealing, the reason why we, you know, we're talking about the co-opted trans community is the fact that a trans, you know, transsexuality is a mental illness, yes, but it's a very, like, how crazy are you? It's like a healthier trans person's going to go, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm in a women's bathroom and the wife's going to go to the husband and all of a sudden I'm going to get my ass beaten in the parking lot. Okay, that's what a healthy person avoids. Uh, a non-healthy person goes, I'm so self-entitled and narcissistic that I'm going to go in the woman's bathroom with a full beard and go, well, I identify as a female and I'm allowed to be in here. That's, the, that's what a sociopath does. So it's like, that's why I said when you're dealing with these social justice warriors, it's like they've got more things wrong with them in the DSM-5 than we can, you know, than we have on one hand. So, uh, you know, that's the bigger issue. Well, and do you think these social justice warriors kind of playing this part and pushing it so far? Like, I, I remember reading a story about a fraternity, right? Uh, there was a group on campus that uh, had an organization. It was like an LGBT thing, right? But they, they had say over, I believe, what certain fraternities could be there and what certain organizations could be there. Uh, and so the fraternity came up with the idea of pretending to be transsexual because at that point anybody could identify as anything and nobody could ever check or verify it, right? How do you do that? So they all pretended to be transsexual, got into the organization and voted everybody out and put themselves in charge. Hmm. Uh, do, do you think that that kind of situation is going on online where people are just... You've got people, and even in real life with the bathroom situation, where they're like, fuck it, I'll just, I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I'm entitled to, to do whatever I want. I'll use whatever thing I can to get whatever I want. Do you think that's playing a part in this? Well, yeah, I call them uh, transgenders. Transgenders, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're the latest fad kind of thing. Yeah, and see, it's I like, guess. it's, they're the, they're the new it oppressed minority. And I mean, right now, the, the media is really pushing hard that we need to hate cops. Um, you know, it's like, you know, uh, there was a Daily Beast article that went out. It's like, oh, there were 320-something police uh, killed people, blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, yeah, in 2013, there were over 14,000 murders. You kind of left out that fucking detail. Um, so it's like they're kind of pushing that narrative right now. But it's like after gay marriage became legal in over 30 states, it's like the whole trans issue became, oh, this is what's hip and cool now. So it's like it's the new it thing. Oh, I'm the new oppressed group, so let me jump on the bandwagon and say I'm trans. And it's like a lot of people who follow me on Twitter will know that I talk a lot of shit about people who use trans asterisk, and I just refer to them as trans plus, uh, you know, comparing them to atheism plus, because it's like, they're people who say that they're quote unquote trans, but they don't have body dysmorphia or any kind of gender dysmorphism. So essentially, they're not transitioning into anything, they don't believe they have anything wrong with their body, and yet they want to label themselves as trans. Now. I don't know about you, but that's fucking crazy. <laughs> that is batshit crazy. That is just saying, you know, that's just wanting attention. That's narcissistic personality. There's a, a word in edgewise here. I guess I kind of didn't realize that, we're, that there were people who would go in with a full beard and a cock in a in a women's bathroom, and, and that was a thing. Like I, that, That's so alien to me. As somebody who is trans, who, if if I would have done that, I, I there's a, a good chance that you would have gotten stabbed. Like that's that's so bizarre to me, and so it's just, I can't really wrap my head around it. Why the fuck would you do that? Like if you were transgender and you were and you were trying to live your every, every single day, ah, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah, there's yeah, basic safety protocols that you sort of pick up along the way. How you hold your head, places you go, um, individuals you talk to, uh, ways that you, so you don't end up killed. And in a situation like that, 
then saying, oh, well, I'm transgender, you have to let me into that. It's like, I, I'm just, I'm shocked that it's like that. And to that person, I want to say, fuck you. Yeah, I, I always link these kids, um, these Tumblrites, a video that's on YouTube, I believe it's still there. Um, transgender woman gets beaten in McDonald's bathroom. Uh, and you watch that video, and then you know, then you know what we're talking about. Then, then you'll know what real discrimination is like, what it's really like to be targeted, uh, what a real victim looks like. And they don't want to, they don't want to talk about that. They, they don't want to deal with the real issue. Um, it's like well, they right, just it's, they're, they're a bunch of you know. Uh, generally, what I find on Tumblr is it's a bunch of affluent uh, twenty-year-olds, you know, eighteen-year-olds uh, from nice neighborhoods that don't have any real problems in their lives that play pretend and. Um, yeah, like you said, they hop onto the latest fad and then want to play the victim, but mm -hmm. never address. They'll never address anything real, or they'll never talk about a real issue or shit that actually happens. Because fuck it, they don't care. It's all me, me, me. Um, I mean, how can you take anyone seriously uh, that you know received a bought and paid for education and a bullshit degree by their rich parents? Uh, with a gold spoon in their mouth, still living at home, is spouting about intersectionality and you know poor people. Uh, and trans people and whatever, and it's like when they've never they've never worked a day in their life, they've never known what it's like to have a life beyond mommy and daddy's credit cards. It's like these they don't live in the real fucking world, uh, and you know they are the leaders of these fucked up individuals that they're brainwashing on the internet. You know, chat. Somebody threw this out in chat. This is actually kind of interests me. Uh, somebody said male trannies can't be victims. Uh, <laughs> Uh, are, are, have you seen an encroachment of feminism? Uh, I, I know we talked about TERFs a little bit, but uh, you, do transsexuals deal with that shit a lot? I mean, uh, you know, is patriarchy and you know all, all of that kind of crazy privilege for power shit thrown in your face? I don't know. You should ask my uncle when he bashed my skull in over New Year's a couple of years ago just for being trans. Um, I, I think it's uh, pretty uh, fucked up that you know, again, it goes to show that, you know, they have no respect for people that are actually uh, dealing with real issues and they just want to. I can send pics. Uh, I've actually, I posted them on Twitter before, but I took them down because they were pretty fucking gruesome. Um, uh, but yeah, no, they don't give a shit about people who are actual victims. They just want, they want professional victims. And, you know, it's a theater. It's a stage act. It's not real. Uh, Liz, how about yourself? What do you think? I would say if if you think you're that oh shit, I'm I'm so oppressed. Try living in uh, African countries where they will murder you for being gay. They will straight up the government will execute you. Um, I don't know. It makes me sad that this is the state of if, if you don't actually have a real problem, you have to make one up. Ugh. Yeah, that does seem to be the flavor of the day. Uh, self-diagnosis, self-victimization, uh, you know, coming up with whatever uh, you're a victim of, even if it comes to making it up. And then it seems like they'll they'll target people when in whatever community it is they're infiltrating. I'm talking about, like, SJWs. And try to drive them out, I guess, because maybe it makes them look bad by comparison. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to infiltrate gaming, you need to get rid of gamers, because then you are representative of what gamers are. If you infiltrate LGBT, you need to get rid of the actual people in that organization, so you are what they are, and then you bring the attention on yourself. Well, I, I, I don't think the patriarchy is a thing. I think it's a myth. I think it's just something that... It's, it's, it's nebulous like God. You can't really prove or disprove it, and it's just used to justify terrible things. Um, and if, uh, if advocating for for free speech and saying, you know what, I have a thick skin, I'm not a victim, I refuse to be you know, co-opted with you people. If that's, if that's me joining the patriarchy, then fuck it, I'll, I'll raise the banner. Because at some point, rationality, sanity, has to, o has to overcome this. And, and the fact that we're still entertaining this idea that it's, <laughs> oh, well, we should talk, no, it's, it's insane. Now, uh, another question I'm kind of curious of, it, why is it that it seems that, you know, when somebody makes the news, uh, at least online I'm talking, when it, you know, when we're talking about um, a transsexual that's, that's, that's getting a lot of attention, going back to the three examples I gave before, even talking like Brianna Wu or something like that, why does it always seem to be male to female transsexuals? What about the female to male ones? Why don't they ever seem to be at the center of a shitstorm? Is there a difference in, in the biology involved? Is there a difference in the, I, I don't know, the group around it? Or well, do you, do you know, kind of know what I'm talking about here?
Uh, any idea, Sophia? I got lost in reading both this chat and the fact that my Twitter has been blown up. So I kind of missed this one. Sorry. I dropped uh, the ball. No, I, I, I'll restate it. Um, why is it when you're looking at an online controversy, uh, I'll go back to the previous, uh, previous examples. You've got people like Lorelai Bailey or Brianna Wu, that kind of stuff. Why does it seem to mostly focus on male to female transsexuals? Why don't we see more uh, shitstorms revolving around female to male? Is it a difference in the biology involved? Is it a difference in, uh, I don't know, the atmosphere around them and the groups they're a part of? It seems to be like every time you hear something or there's some kind of shitstorm online about it, it's always male to female, but never female to male. Hmm. That. It's interesting you ask that because on our YouTube channel, the most shit we've ever gotten is for anything we do dealing with FDMs. Uh, because essentially you have. Uh, what are true transsexuals, people that are on hormone therapy who are actually doing transitional thir surgery, who have had their breasts removed, and uh, usually these guys look like like bears. Like it, they look, you know, more like dudes than uh, you know a lot of uh, the the guys at my um, comic book store. So it's like they're usually beefcake buff dudes with beards, and it's like you'd have no fucking clue that they either, you know, have a pseudo penis or, you know, still have a vagina. Um, so it's like you see this issue where basically you have a, 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 a trans Bieber, you know, some uh, like that fucking like that lesbian who did that Gamergate poem or whatever. It's like you see someone like that who claims that they're trans and then doesn't understand why society doesn't see them as a man. Uh, and you hear all that infighting, but it, for whatever reason, it doesn't see the same level of attention uh, by this current you know, uh, state of the media. But it's there. It's just, um, you know, most people... They're they're not paying attention to it, but it but it's it's certainly there. It's it's essentially the battle of butch lesbians versus F to M's, and it's like butch lesbians want absolutely no association with F to M's at all, and then you've got this new generation of people saying that they're gender fluid or gender queer or whatever, and usually when someone's doing that, it's typically, from my experience, a young lesbian girl who wants to dress like a boy. And because feminists have like pushed this narrative that gender roles are gender, that you know wearing a dress makes you a woman, or that wearing pants, or that you know doing X, Y, and Z, playing with Barbies makes you a girl, or playing with GI Joes makes you a guy, they've confused the fucking shit out of an entire young generation of lesbians, where now they think they're like genderqueer or agender or whatever, because the reality is they're just butch lesbians. Like, that's it. So they're tomboys or whatever. It's like, you know, they're not feminine. Who gives a shit? But that's that's where it goes to that uh, you talked about, like, uh, raising people in an environment. That That's where this is, like, being plagued the most. If you really want to look into it, the people that are being affected the most by this right now are actually women. Uh, that are being told that their masculine behavior so all of a sudden makes them trans. And it's like, are you out of your fucking mind? The answer is yes. <sighs> all right. Uh, well, I think uh, we're hitting two hours here, so I think it's been it's been a good discussion. Uh, is there anything you guys want to close this out with? Anything you want to say before we uh, before we cut out? Uh, I think um, if you are or you you think you're transsexual, the first thing you ought to do is go to see a doctor or see a therapist. Um, Self-diagnosis, especially getting into an echo chamber on Tumblr, is probably the worst thing you can do. And understand that this is a process that uh, demands a lot out of you. Um, it's not easy. And uh, from the sound of it, Sophia and I both have uh, stories where we've gone through some pretty awful shit to get there. Um, so apart from that, don't let anybody define you based upon what you read online. And you do need a thick skin. So that's all I got to say. Okay. Um, uh, for me, I would just say I would recommend www.transgendercare.com. I would recommend looking up WPATH. I would recommend the DSM-5. Um, for me, anything that has to deal, I'm all for medical advocacy, and that's why they call me Triscum. Somebody asked what that means, and that's a trans person who 
strictly believes in the medical diagnosis of transgenderism, and I don't believe in all the bullshit that's been made up in the past few years. Um, and if it's something you're dealing with, then you know, reach out to a professional, um, somebody that knows what they're doing, and. Uh, you might find that even in Los Angeles County, I had to go through uh, about 16, and I, I called about 16 different therapists before I found someone who had any real experience with uh, transgender pa patients. So it's like I know it's very difficult, certainly uh, in other parts of the country. That's why I chose to move here um, to get proper um, uh, treatment. So, and, and again, it's like I would say. Anytime you hear people bring up the fact that transgenderism, transgenderism isn't a mental illness, they're full of shit. Uh, it is. Uh, the question is, you know, how do you go about dealing with it? And for some people like myself, transitional surgery and hormones was what worked. For other people, talk therapy might work. I mean, it's, it certainly depends on how old they are. Um, but I definitely recommend, you know, either directing them to proper uh, help. It's like, uh, you know, in a nice way. You don't always have to be an asshole about it. Uh, or if you are, you know, dealing with a type of body dysmorphia, then again, I would recommend reaching out to a uh, professional who knows what they're talking about and don't just don't get caught in the echo chamber of Tumblr and allow them to inflate you with these falsehoods of what it actually is. Because it is an illness and you can get better. Um, that's the only reason I'm out. It, like visibly trans, as some people want to call it, it's like um, it's is to show that it's like no, you can transition and live a normal life beyond transition. That you can get back to just you know doing your work, having healthy relationships, and so on and so forth. So uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. That's all I'm saying. There okay. actually there is one last thing I want to say. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, jet fuel can't melt steel beams. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so you've been to New York, hmm? <laughs> hey, uh, no comment. Uh, no comment. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, uh, I hope the chat got uh, some answers to the questions they wanted. Uh, again, Iron Liz, and uh, is it Hidden Tara or Tara? How, how am I saying it on Twitter? Hidden Tara, like the hill in Ireland. There we go. All right. Well, thank you both for coming out. Uh, thanks, chat, for coming out, and I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks a lot.